A 66-year-old male with no past medical history presents to the emergency room with chest pain, dyspnea on exertion that began one hour ago. Of note, the patient arrived from an eight-hour flight one day ago. CTNJ reveals a pulmonary embolism. If present, which of the following would make the strongest case for thrombolytic therapy use in this patient? And so the answer to the previous question that we posted about the pulmonary embolism is E, hypotension, okay? Um, so whenever you're approaching these patients who have a pulmonary embolus, uh, either on the exam or in real life, it's very important that you approach them in an organized and systematic manner, okay? So you want to subdivide these patients that have an established diagnosis into three categories. Either it's simple, uncomplicated PE, a submassive pulmonary embolus, or a massive pulmonary embolism. And simple uncomplicated is a patient that has a PE and doesn't have any of these things. They're not hypoxemic. They do not have an elevated BMP, no elevation in troponin level, and no ventricular strain either on CT or echo. And those patients oftentimes can receive um, outpatient uh, treatment. They can just get um, anticoagulation in the ER and they don't actually need admission. They can be discharged. Submassive and massive pulmonary embolus, it becomes a little bit trickier. So massive PE is somebody who has a PE with um, hemodynamic instability, specifically hypotension. So this is someone where the pulmonary embolus has caused significant uh, hemodynamic compromise and the treatment for these patients is oftentimes systematic TPA, okay, systemic. Now, if uh, systemic TPA is not uh, adequate or is contraindicated, then um, surgical thrombectomy would be the next thing that we would do, but that's oftentimes risky and the patient has a very high mortality rate with it. Mass Submassive PE is the patient that has these things, but does not have hypotension, does not have hemodynamic instability. So that's the patient that oftentimes can be a little hypoxemic, but more importantly has an elevated an elevation in BMP, an elevation in troponin, and those two are a marker for increased mortality in these patients and uh, are a sign of right ventricular strain. Uh, right ventricular strain can be seen on CT, but it's much better evaluated on an echo. Okay, and you can, sometimes they can describe it as right ventricular dilation. That's the same thing, okay? So those patients are hemodynamically stable, but have these signs, and they, they do need admission, they do need close observation, and generally speaking, you should get uh, interventional radiology or vascular department on board for these patients to determine whether they need a catheter-directed TPA or not, and that goes case by case depending on the patient, okay? I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, uh, please post them in the comments.